Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. In today's video, this is an air dry clay alternative. We are going to be making some salt dough decorations. Guys, I love salt dough. Now, the few people I've mentioned it to have actually said they've never heard of it, never used it, never made it. But I remember specifically growing up in school and making salt dough Christmas tree decorations every year in school. So let me know in the comment section if you also grew up making salt dough decorations. This is easy, simple, fun. Three ingredients to make decorations that are going to last you forever. Let's go. The first thing you will need is a bowl or a mixing bowl. And I absolutely love this one. I've only recently bought it. It's by a designer called Mason Cash. I'm obsessed with their designs. They're all very woodland creatures. Love it. This cannot be easier, guys. You are going to need one cup of plain flour, half a cup of salt, and half a cup of water. Honestly, could not be easier. It is literally three ingredients to make some of the most incredible handmade Christmas ornaments stroke decorations that are going to last you for years. I know I mentioned at the beginning having memories of being in school and seeing and having and playing with some salt dough food items in the home corner. Do you know that kind of way? I just have these memories and it has to be food, doesn't it? <laughs> Imagine my earliest childhood school memory being playing with food. Oh, that's terrible. Absolutely terrible. But yes, they last years. They're so robust. And honestly, this is very, very salt based. So if you are making this with the kitty winkies, just make sure they are old enough to understand they cannot eat this dough. It is not going to be any good for them whatsoever and just tastes like salt, if I'm honest. Yes, I tried it. Of course I tried it. Everybody tries it. Whenever a teacher says, do not put this in your mouth, it is in your mouth. And guys, yeah, I was young. I'm not talking when I was 15. <laughs> I was very young. So you just want to mix it until it comes together. And as soon as it comes together, it's quite sticky in consistency so just keep working it now i am setting my oven to the lowest possible temperature the bbc recipe did say 150 for three hours so i'm setting mine at 100 and i'm going to put mine in the oven for four hours now i am very specific like i said at the beginning i knew exactly what i wanted to do and that is to make a star garland so i got all of my star cookie cutters and i just kind of had a play and it was only kind of halfway through i thought I want miniature. I want the smallest possible star to create the tiniest, dinkiest, most petite little stars. And yeah, so obviously work out what it is you want to make. You could use your real typical Christmas cookie cutters, your Christmas trees, your stockings, all of these yummy, yummy Christmas cookie cutters. So yeah, just have a think, have a play. You've got time to play with this. It only really goes rock hard once it's baked in the oven. So you've got time to play with this and work out what it is that you want to create. Now I am rolling mine out pretty thinly and I am rolling it out with additional flour like you would I guess biscuits if you're if you're actually like baking your own biscuits for Christmas it's the same kind of principle you use flour on the surface make sure that your rolling pin is floured before you actually roll out your dough and cut your biscuit shapes or your cookies um but yes, it wasn't long before I realised I couldn't actually get them off of the glass surface. So don't be like me. It's been years, guys. It's been years. So I actually transferred it onto some parchment paper, oven proof paper, grease proof paper. I know we all call this paper something completely different, but it is that oven proof paper. And um, that's pretty much what I call it. And it's just going to be easier for me to get these stars where I want them because I've got them on this paper. It was so impossible to get it off the glass because like I said, this dough, it's not like air dry clay. It's very, very flimsy, very much like you would find a biscuit dough or a cookie dough at this point. So yeah, I laid my stars out and I just took away the one that was way too dinked for me and I didn't really like it. I also tried out a couple of larger stars. Now, my plan really for these was to make a star garland and some additional star Christmas tree decorations. So the big stars were really just to see how they would bake in the oven and moving forward, maybe next year, I could make something larger. Um, but yeah, honestly, I honestly felt like one cup of flour half a cup of salt and half a cup of water it's too much 
it is too much. I felt like I was playing with this dough for hours like when is this dough gonna run out like I felt like I'd made 50 stars and I still had the same amount of dough so this goes a long long way so if you do want to halve the ingredients I would truly recommend it I would I would say guys use half a cup of um flour and then quarter of a cup of the other ingredients because it goes ridiculously far especially if you are rolling them out as thinly as I am here look at this I've still got tons left and I feel like I've already made so much you can also start to see the difference in the texture of the dough it is firming up it is easier to use at this point so again another recommendation if you are going to try this would be to just let your dough firm up a bit before you start to roll it out because the difference was immense and it just made life so much easier now here's the thing these embossed rollers that you saw in my latest air dry clay video they are of course designed as cookie rollers biscuit rollers when you're actually baking or for like a white fondant icing for a christmas cake they are designed for that but the truth is when i read all of the reviews when you bake a cookie or you bake a biscuit, the embossing tends to get lost. The biscuit rises, the cookie rises, and the embossing gets lost. Now, obviously that does not happen on air dry clay. We all know that. But does it happen on salt dough? I'm thinking it wouldn't because I'm using plain flour. I'm not using self-raising flour. So this was more of an experiment just to find out, can we use embossed rolling pins on salt dough? And I guess we'll all find out together. Pretty sure there's videos out there. I didn't search for myself. I just figured I would try it in this video and show you all if it works or not. So now it's time to just transfer all of my stars onto the baking trays. Now, I've only got two giant baking sheets. Um, feel like I should have... I should have more. I don't know. There's only two of us in the house. Do we need more? But yeah, so this had to go in the oven two times. I had to put my two large baking sheets in and then what was left over. And yeah, you can see here that the dough is really firm at this point. And this was the most favorite time to use it. This is when I thought this dough is absolutely perfect right now. So take this advice from me. Don't go upstairs and roll your dough out as soon as you've made it. Just play with it a while, knead it, get it to firm up. And this is when I went super speedy, <laughs> sped it all up for you guys because you don't need to sit through this in real time. I decided with the rest of the dough, I would just go crazy and make lots of miniature stars because this is really where my garland is going to come from. And the more I made, the more I just kept on making because I still had so much dough left half the recipe half the recipe <laughs> you really don't need this much depending of course on what you're making you might be you might be using some of your biggest cookie cutters but here I am they are all pretty much done it was just a case of making sure that they were all transferred over onto my baking sheets ready to go in the oven ignore the two little beads on the right hand side I was going to try it and decided not to I cut more stars instead but yeah I just basically got my baking trays there are better ways to do this guys and I just slid it under my um, oven proof paper and then just rearranged them all so that none of them actually touch and then I put them in the oven for four hours here are the results after four hours of baking in the oven and this is another I want to say two hours later they've all fully cooled down and look at this I was so happy to see that the embossing had stayed on the stars now here's an issue we had some bubbles now I don't know why I need to google this I'm not a salt dough specialist but there were lots of the bigger ones that had these real big air pockets air bubbles in them now I have had this before with salt dough and it's not ideal they are very breakable they could easily pop and break and any pressure could actually just snap them so you really want your salt dough to be fully flat when it comes out the oven 
fully flat. Now I am going to individually paint all of these stars with white and red acrylic paint. Now you can spray paint them depending on your climate. As you all know we have snow here and it is like minus degrees outside so spray painting for me out in the snow is just not an option and I knew I had to hand paint each and every single one. But you know, that is what also I enjoy. You know, I've got my Christmas music on, I'm just enjoying it, having fun. And I have to say, these two red acrylic paints from the range, you know the little bottles that I showed you in the air dry clay video? They're cheap craft acrylic paints. What a dream, what a dream to use on salt dough. The white paint was a much thicker, almost thick gesso acrylic. And it got so messy so quickly. These are all dry now. They dry so fast. You need to decide what twine you're gonna use. I would recommend a really strong, strong string or a dupe twine or this candy cane twine, something super strong. I wouldn't recommend wool because I did this a few years ago using just wool. Um, and yeah, it didn't work. It, it just snapped. The weight just ripped the wool. So definitely choose your string, to choose your twine. And of course, honestly, you can add anything to this garland. I'm just making a salt dough star garland. You could add so many more things. You could make miniature pom-poms. You could make miniature tassels, tiny little um, bobble hats. Some of you may remember this video I did a couple of years ago where we made miniature teeny tiny wool bubble hats. This would work gorgeous on the garland, like a star, a hat, a star, a hat, and so on. But the choice is really yours. Now I'm just lining my stars up. You can measure it with a ruler if you want, but I'm just eyeballing it, working out that there's kind of an equal distance between each star. What I'm doing is a dab of glue right at the top of the stars because I do want them to hang down. I don't want them to twist around, spin around. If I glue the string to the middle of the stars, then there's potential for us to see the back. Now, the reason I didn't paint the backs is because I'm hot gluing them onto my twine and I wasn't sure how the hot glue and the acrylic paint would interact and whether it wouldn't actually stick to the salt though, it would just stick to the acrylic paint then there was a risk that it would just fall off or drop off. So I did not paint the backs of my creations. And as you can see here, I'm just eyeballing it, equally spacing them and putting the glue right at the very, very tippity top of the stars. Next up, I am actually using some of my leftover stars. Once I know I've got my garland to the length that I wanted it, I'm using my leftover stars for individual teeny tiny little Christmas tree decorations. So I've just cut some twine to make some loops and again, hot gluing at the very tippity top of the stars and putting my twine down, reinforcing it with some hot glue underneath and above just to make sure that they stick real, real good. And I did this with all of my leftover red stars and white stars and then I had to do the rest. <laughs> It's only my white stars that appear in my garland. The red ones are just going to be individual little tree hangers. And here it is. I absolutely love it. Now, I've got it hanging on the shelf in my living room, as you can see. You could have this on your garland. You could wrap it around a wreath. This could go up the side of your stairs. You could do real long dangly hanging stars from your stair banisters in the windows. Hello, George. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't handle it very well when I'm trying to film in front of him. But you really could just go to town on this and do whatever it is you want. I love it. I absolutely love it. So we're going to go into my kitchen now to look at my kitchen tree to see those miniature teeny tiny individual stars. Now you do have to kind of look carefully, but they are small. They are small and I love it them. Imagine if you've got like a miniature tree, you could make even smaller ones. I absolutely love them. I hope you found this video inspiring. It is an alternative to air dry clay and it's so easy to make. It really, really is. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.